So this video is going to be how to remove a starter out of a Chevy Avio. You're going to enter from the passenger side. I make it look way too easy, <laughs> technically. But right there you can see the two holes as far as the two main bolts that actually hold the starter. Figured I would show you it ahead of time so that way at least you have an idea you know where you're looking for with it out of the actually out of the way obviously this is what it looks like when you got the starter in place you're gonna use a size 12 and that's gonna be for the bolt that holds the um, cable from I believe it's the battery you can undo it then the bottom mounting bolt has actually two nuts on it. The outside nut is a size 12. You're going to remove that, then you're going to remove your, um, I think it's another battery or another cable that's coming from the battery, and I'm not sure what those other cables are that attach to it. And mind you, it was way harder than what it looks like at first because I was trying to figure this all out on my own. So made a video once I actually had it out because then I knew the tricks. Now that back nut there on the bottom mounting bolt is going to be a size 13. You loosen it first and it comes out as one whole solid piece. I wouldn't take it all the way out. Now here's the tricky part. It's also a size 13 that goes to the back bolt that looks like that. And that's that one that's hidden back behind there. Now the manual say you're supposed to supposedly take that engine bracket off or lift the engine to get to it. However, I managed to get it out without doing either of the two. It took me some time to figure it out because you cannot I mean, you cannot see it. You can get a glimpse barely from above. But you can see on the screen what I used and how I've got it just barely peeking out. I used my fingers through the engine bracket to kind of help hold it in place and, you know, slide it back there. Don't have the socket on there or the, the actual ratchet on because you'll never get it in. But... It technically would be a, well, you'll see at the very end I have a picture that shows, but I used, a, I believe it's a 6-inch, um, 3 ace extension, then a little tiny, it's about an inch long adapter from 3 ace down to a quarter, and then it's about a 2-inch extension, quarter extension, and then a quarter inch ratchet, and then also, a, you know, the, the size 13 deep socket that's what gives you enough space to barely get that in there and use your fingers just to you know keep that up as far as in order to get that little ratchet on at first and mind you I also had removed my alternator and that might be the key because I didn't have that in my way But that's still a hell of a lot easier than lifting an engine or, you know, removing that uh, engine bracket, in my opinion. And it really wasn't, um, it, it didn't take much to get those first couple spins as far as to break it loose. And then because you have like no clearance, that's why I take the ratchet back off. And then I continue to unscrew it just with my fingers. And then slide it out and you can get your hand, if you feel just right, you know, up behind the starter, you can get that stupid little nut deal loose enough to slide it out, you know, once it's actually, once you've got it spinned so it's just barely hanging there because you don't have much space at all. And I had removed that bracket, which just flathead screwdriver, pop it off. And I did this only because, um, you know, there and I unhooked, um, I 
Oh, I can't see. Sorry. I unhooked that sensor, which was up in the bracket, which is just pressed down on that little metal, whatever, loop deal. And I only did that stuff to get the wires, you know, because there's not much space at all. So I didn't want, you know, pressure or getting anything caught up into any wires. So I just unhooked those type of wires right there just to, you know, not accidentally hit them or whatever and end up breaking wires. You know, just easier just getting that stuff out of your way so you can push it out of your way if you need to. But now once you've got that nut off in the back, completely actually off, you still have that bottom one that you've got loose and you still have a nut that you haven't loosened yet that is holding the um, ignition signal, whatever, ignition switch. But you can't get to that ignition switch, not unless you were to actually remove the engine bracket. I mean, so at this point, you take out that bottom nut. Once you've got both the mounting bolts actually off, you can actually get it kind of loose enough to actually twist it. As you can see, I'm just be gentle, you know, and, and careful because obviously how this is sitting because you're not wanting to pull it way down. All you're trying to do is pull it back enough just to be able to twist it enough to just barely have access to that back nut there that's going to be that ignition, um, the ignition switch wire, which is going to be a size 10 because you don't want to break that wire. Sorry, I end up trying to, I drop my phone and then try to readjust it. But you use a size 10 with a little quarter inch ratchet. As it's barely, you know, as it's barely twisted, you can barely fit it in there. But it's got to be a socket, you know, because you don't have much space. So open-ended will not work there from the angle that it's at. You can't get a good snug fit on it. And it doesn't take much either. I mean, it, it shouldn't be, you know, too hard. But unscrew it, release that cord, you know, off of there once you've got, you know, that off. And at that point, then it would be completely free. And you twist it, you know, and just slowly bring it back. I found that path to be the easiest as far as going back towards the firewall. Um, Here are the tools you're going to need. In order to say pull this all off they're clearly listed hopefully you can see them fine um, and here are you know compared to uh, whatever a ruler technically it's going to equal out to about 12 inches 